Mikael Bridges is one of my favorite players in the 2018 NBA Draft. He's a 6'7", 210-pound wing from Malvern, Pennsylvania, which is nearby Philadelphia where he went to school at Villanova. He steadily developed there at Villanova under Jay Wright for the last four years. He's a relentless, tenacious athlete with a high positional intelligence and a 7'2 wingspan to go along with it. He's also an aggressive rack attack guy that's developed a real taste for posterization. I'm just going to let this speak for itself. UCF is 12 and 0, and they have zero chance to. Oh! Oh! <laughs> we interrupt this football conversation with a Mikel Bridges slam, and then a block at the other end. It occasionally gets overlooked that Bridges is actually the age of a college senior. He redshirted during his freshman year. He's a rare four-year player projected in the top 10, and that's a testament to how much he's developed. When his first NBA game tips off, he'll be 22 years old. Jay Wright claimed that even though Bridges was an intelligent player and gifted with great athleticism and length, he wasn't physically ready to play college basketball in 2015. He was so lanky and awkward that his teammates nicknamed him Noodles. That there is a belittling nickname. Bridges' development is fascinating because you have to wonder how it would have turned out in another scenario at another school. The four-year run from 2015 to 2018 at Villanova saw likely the most offensively talented players in the history of the school coming through the program, rivaled really only by Lowry, Foy, Nardi, and the Allen Ray bunch. Bridges' lanky frame, intriguing raw physical skills, and basketball IQ were like carbon and Jay Wright's offensive and defensive approaches were the perfect, highly pressurized, skill-demanding environment to produce a developmental diamond like Mikhail Bridges. Based on precedent, when we see a guy like Bridges, we take a look at the best defenders in the world and throughout Hoop's history and say, that guy could be an elite defender. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Having the tools does not necessarily mean that you're gonna be equipped to use them. I touched on this when I wrote about Ashton Hagen, the guy that I'm sure we'll see in the NBA draft really soon, but if you're casually watching basketball, you might say to yourself, that guy is getting a lot of steals and blocking a lot of shots. He is the best defender on the floor. Our eyes are always drawn to the flashy and big time play, but defense is very often unsexy. Most people wanna score. Not everybody wants to play defense because it takes effort. And before a player even catches the ball, a lot of that is going on. It's containing, funneling, talking, taking calculated risks, and first and foremost, making sure that your feet are doing the work first. Mikhail Bridges is a very, very intelligent and gifted defensive player. He's highly versatile. He's able to guard and capably switch spots one through four. And we're not talking potentially either. This isn't speculating what he could do in the future. Bridges is already highly advanced defensively, and he communicates exceptionally well on that side of the ball. He's doing that stuff now, and he's been the best defender in a college program that's won two national championships in three years. He pretty much without fail draws the assignment of the other team's best player, and he has for the last three years. He's quick and nimble enough to pester smaller guards, and he's long enough again 7-2 wingspan to at least make life inconvenient for bigger players. Bridges wingspan, motor, and defensive awareness, and prepare yourself because you're going to hear people saying this a lot around the NBA draft, set him up to be a prototypical 3 and D guy in the NBA at the very least. Like I said before, the more and more basketball favors having offensively versatile players on the floor, the more mongooses teams are going to want to have around. Cobra killers. You might think to yourself, Hey, this dingus just made the argument that steals and blocks aren't important. No, it's not that. I just think that positional defense is just as important or more important. And Mikhail Bridges is a guy that checks all the boxes. He does happen to block a lot of shots for a wing. He gets a ton of deflections and he makes your life miserable with smart positional defense when doing the simplest things. You could spend an afternoon down a YouTube wormhole studying how advanced Villanova's four-out offensive approach has been in the last few years. Nova's organic read-and-react pick-and-roll situation, specifically drags, dribble handoffs, slip screens, roll and replaces, are likely going to be fantastic preparation for Bridges as he transitions to the next level. For this reason, I think Bridges is probably one of the most prepared players in the draft from an X's and O's standpoint. He's one of the least likely guys in the draft to struggle with becoming lost defensively 
defensively as rookies often do when they make the jump. Bridges really improved as a shooter during his time at Villanova. His time shooting the three initially in college was rocky, registering as one of the worst shooters in the entire conference. But Mikhail worked and worked at overhauling his mechanics and eventually became a top 23 point shooter percentage wise. He essentially did what Michael Kidd Gilchrist failed to do. Sorry, Mike. He's become a quick trigger guy and had stretches where he got white hot this past season. He can really shoot it now. He seems to really like to shoot off the catch going to the left and he can occasionally create his own shot in space at the top of the key stepping in. Bridges' defensive genius and his ability to hit perimeter shots will more than likely be enough to help him retain value in the NBA for quite some time. But for him to move to another level, which most players want to, for him to become a star, he'll have to develop in creating offense for himself. This could open up a whole world of possibility for him, considering his physical tools, and assure that he can stay on the floor in crunch time situations. Uh, should he find himself in playoff games as his career goes along. If modern playoff basketball has taught us anything, it's that players with the ability to create offense, stay on the floor, and trump pretty much everything else. The more fluid he becomes with back-to-the-basket mid-range situations and finding his shot off the dribble, the more indispensable he'll prove to be in the NBA. Additionally, before he can improve his off-the-dribble offense, he'll have to improve the dribbling itself. At times off the dribble, he looks like an athlete that's been very well taught, but lacks feel. I think it's really difficult to project whether or not Bridges is done developing as he's been such a late bloomer. He could be a rare four-year guy that continues to develop, sort of like Draymond Green. When thinking about Bridges, I catch myself repeating things that I said about Shea Gildas Alexander. This is a guy that might not be the high risk, high reward type of pick that you'd make usually in this spot in the draft if you're looking for a star. But Mikhail is definitely the type of guy that can contribute to winning basketball sooner than later. He's one of the most adaptable, relevant players in the draft. Defensive intelligence, consistent perimeter shooting, rebounding, selflessness, and a real lack of concern about making the sexy, big, you know, glory plays all make him a guy that could be an asset for more or less any team. If you put a high-powered super soaker in my ear, please don't, and made me bet, no, I don't think that Bridges is going to be an all-star type player. But do I expect Bridges to play meaningful winning basketball at some point during his NBA career? Honestly, yes, I do expect that. Because strong role players will never stop being valuable in the NBA. And that's what I expect Mikhail Bridges to be for a long time. Let me know if you agree. Thanks. Hey folks, I appreciate you watching and if you like this video, click the like button and be sure to subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter at, at @jkyleman. Say hey.